Hi everyone, this is Brandy from everyoneandthensome.com and today we're doing another focus on learning. The focus on learning for today is not a curriculum per se, but I want to talk about when do I homeschool? So I am a working mother. I'm a single parent. I have three children. I work full time outside the home and I'm also doing this blog and so a question I get asked a lot probably the second question after why in the world are you trying to homeschool is when in the world do you find time to homeschool? So that's what I want to talk about today and I'm just going to tell you that <clears throat> my schedule that I keep on my phone and the schedule that I keep on my wall are my best friend. I have a highly organized life and so I've learned to carve out the times to do what's important. One of the things I had to do was I had to let go of the notion of traditional school. Obviously working full time and everything else I do I can't devote 8 to 5 or 9 to 3 or even 9 to noon I can't devote time like that to doing homeschool. <clears throat> so what we've done is we've broken it up and we've scheduled in spare moments, not spare moments because they're scheduled, but we've scheduled in moments for homeschool. And so I want to take you through a few of those and kind of show you when we find time to do the homeschool. So first thing in the morning, I get up super early, too early really, I mean, I, can I say it? I can say it, too early, at 3.45 and I go to the gym. Um, I usually get back right around 5 when I get the kids up. So once, you know, I've taken my shower and the kids are ready and everybody's ready after Daniel's up and we all take our medication, then we go and we do our bulletin board work. Okay, so this is our bulletin board we do in the morning times. We do this before we go to daycare. We have our current sight words that we're working on. We're working on some music review and we have our Bible verse that we work on each week. We're on E now. <clears throat> so first thing we do after we take our medications, we go and we run through our bulletin board. This takes a couple of minutes. The second thing we do is our calendar work. And we have two calendars we work with. This is the first one where we figure out what today is, yesterday, tomorrow, what day of the week, and we count how many days there is to our next special day or holiday. And then we move over to this one. This is our daily calendar. And this one we talk about what our mood is and what the weather is going to be like today. So all this is done before we go to daycare. Okay, so that's what we do every morning before we go to daycare. And that usually takes us right about five to ten minutes, depending on how um, awake Daniel is and how much he wants to participate. Now there are days when he's just out, and obviously it doesn't happen that day, and that's okay too, because we do this pretty much five to seven days a week. So. We also have a set of things that we do before we go to bed at night. We always do our hooked on phonics. We always do our handwriting without tears. We don't always use this book, but what I do is I give him a couple of letters. I usually give him three or four letters down here and then he draws them across. We do this every day. And at the end of the day, I also give him a math worksheet with three addition problems and three subtraction problems that he can use whatever manipulatives he wants. He likes to use his bears. He also likes to use these little cubes we got from the dollar store with his tweezers. He does these. This is one of the few times he gets to use a marker, which he loves, drives him crazy. So, and then he gets to practice writing his numbers and he writes the answers once he figures out the problem. Um, we do that every single day before we go to bed. We also read out of our picture that storybook. These stories are amazing. Look at that. Look at those pictures. Aren't they great? 
but they're also short. They're short. So all of this, the hooked on phonics, the writing, the picture that, and the math, everything together takes, I'd say about 15, 20 minutes at the end of the day before we start getting ready for bed. Everything else we do, the science and the social studies and all of that, we fit in. One of the activities we love to do is when we're driving in the car, we'll do logic problems and um, kind of preschooly things. Like right now, we're working on what group does something belong to. So one of our favorite games, for example, is a tire, a ball, and a pizza. These are all blank. And Daniel has to come up with, you know, these are all things that are round. Like the old, if you're older like I am, you'll remember, it may still be on, the $10,000 pyramid. Same thing. Love that game. Um, we, play, we play a lot of car games. We do a lot of singing in the car. That's how we learned the continents. <clears throat> is we learned it first through song, and then we took it to the map. So... Every time we ride in the car with Daniel, we're playing some sort of learning game. We're listening to some sort of learning song. So right now, we've had 10 minutes first thing in the morning, 15 to 30 minutes last thing at night, and a few minutes in car trips. The other things we fit in. Um, we, on weekends, we do a lot of our crafts on weekends. We do a lot of our crafts on... Um, Monday nights, because Monday nights usually are more free. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, he goes to T-Ball. And then on Wednesdays, he goes to um, Children's Choir and then Children's Bible Study. So on Wednesdays, he pretty much doesn't do any schoolwork outside of our main core because he's, you know, he's involved in children's activities up until 7 o'clock. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, a lot of times after T-Ball, we'll do some sort of craft activity. But the bulk of our science and social studies, our language, our piano. We also do piano a couple of days a week. And I'm going to tell you, Daniel's only four. So our piano practice and our piano lesson is about five to ten minutes long. Almost everything I have him do is chunked into five or ten minutes because that's really the length of his attention before he has to go do something else. And we get so much learning. And I think part of, um, part of what enables me to do the entire homeschool in that kind of time is we don't take a day off. Every single day he's learning something. So, you know, I guess you could call it year-round, and it may evolve as he gets older and starts getting into more complex subjects, but we're teaching him sign language, we're teaching him simple Spanish, we're teaching him all of these things because we're making it part of every day, part of what we're doing every day. Um, and that's what we do. You know, the last thing at night he gets, I don't know what to say, he does, he gets two to three storybooks for bed. He always gets a book that goes with our theme. Right now we're studying trains, so we read a train book. He gets a book that he picks out. So the last, I'm wanting to say five nights in a row, we've read The House That Jack Built, or The Book That Jack Wrote. The Book That Jack Wrote. And then we always end with some poetry. We call it our poetry bedtime book. So... And that's pretty much how we do it. You know, we carve out time where we can and we make sure that the teaching we do counts. Um, and we get everything in. We're studying trains, we're studying science, we're studying social studies, we're getting Bible, we're getting in music, we're getting a ton of socialization. We're getting in all of the things that matter and still working and still running a business, and still doing all the things I have to do as a single mother. So, I hope that helped, and uh, I guess I'll see you later.